everyone wants a trade. Give me a trade. Show me the setup, that type of thing. Well, I'm going to give you a good trade. I'm going to show you the setup. So I'm going to give you a great takeaway. And I'm going to show you a trade that is very consistent. And if I have time today and I can take it live, I will with you. And uh, I think you'll like it. So we're going to do that. But then I also, because I get these emails all the time from people who are, are been in the trading business for several years, they're just getting beaten up, and they're making mistakes. And I don't want, I want to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. So I'm going to go over those real uh, first, and then I'm going to show you my trade setup. But I like to trade at specific times of day. See, trading all day long is very taxing on the body and very, you know, it's hard to do that. It, it's, a, it's a lot of work. You can be drained at the end of the day if you trade from, you know, 8, 9, 10 in the morning all the way to 5 o'clock. So I'm going to show you one of the trades that I take at a very specific time of day this morning. So, but before we get started, I've got to ask you one question. Why aren't you making more money day trading? Well, you're probably making one of these seven mistakes most day traders make. And the first one I just started with, they trade all day long. I mean, can you really be on top of your game and stay focused seven, eight, nine hours out of the day trading? And it's hard. Very few people can do it. I wouldn't recommend it. Find a, a time in the day where you're at your peak, where at your best, and from there, focus on that time. For me, from 7 in the morning to about 9, I'm at my best. I'm at my peak, and I do my best trading at that time. And after that, you know, I tone it down. I'll do other things. And it's like a conditioned athlete. It's just like, uh, you know, being you're on time. You know, some of you guys are night people, right? Some of you guys are morning people. And you've got to trade when you're just at your bet, best. I'm actually in the central standard time zone is where I'm at. I prefer to be on the West Coast. You West Coast people have a great get trading 6 in the morning, 5 in the morning, be done by noon. I love it. So think about just picking an hour out of the day and focus on that. And be at your best, shut your phones off, stay focused, because if you'll, you'll re soon realize that being focused just on a certain period of time of the day is going to make all the difference in the world when you're trading. Now, here's a big one. I think I had a few people come in here. Another huge reason why people are not successful traders is because they're undercapitalized. They don't have enough money. And I, I should, let me get into more, more detail on this because here's what we see all too often is we see people who are excited about the trading business, but they want to trade their mortgage money. They want to trade their car payment. They want to open up an account and put at-risk money on the table. That is the wrong thing you can do. You've got to trade money that you can afford to lose or risk. Now, the big thing that we get into is real estate. Now, if you were to go buy an office complex or apartment buildings or even a house, would you put up your own money to buy that house? No, you wouldn't. What would you do? It's three words, my friend. It's three words. It's OPM, right? Other people's money. Guess what? Same thing in this business. In As a new trader, if you've never done this before, or even, even some seasoned traders that are struggling, I wouldn't recommend trading your own money. I would trade other people's money. And I'll probably spend more time on this today. And we are connected with firms that will give you money to trade. And the worst thing you can do is go out and have no experience and start trading your own money. The odds are well against you that you're going to not do well. Just like anything else, it's a skill, it's a practice. So make sure that once you become good and effective, um, I wouldn't recommend that firm. Um, they give you, I believe, 60% of the wins, right? So um, that's the big thing. I've got firms that will give you 80% or greater. That's what I would deal with. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of advantages. Don't be risking your own money. 
yeah, I got a lot of people who love this idea. Well, it's relatively new in this industry as a new trader within just a few months to be able to trade other people's money. And it's exciting because you're not risking your own money. And we don't want you to. Okay, here's a big one. They learn a new system and they start trading real money right away. It's the wrong thing you can do. Here's how you should progress on this. And I'm going to write it out. When I write stuff out, it's even more important than what's written on the screen. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, when you start learning a new system, you want to do what's called backtest. So you're going to backtest the system. That means you're going to go back in the history and verify that it works. From there, you're going to go ahead and with NinjaTrader or other platforms, there's there's a, there's a setup called market replay. And it's similar to like having a tape recorder and going back in time and playing the day out and you don't have to worry about um, you know losing real money. It's all simulated and it's extremely important that you do market replay because you can practice your trade 100, 200, 300 times. So get good and take the trade in replay several hundred times. After you're good at that, go ahead, go ahead and trade in a live market in simulation because you don't know the future, you don't know what's going to happen, and you can test the system very, very, um, straight word I'm looking for, honestly, I should say. And fourth, we recommend is you trade with a prop firm. And that basically means that you take your system and you go to the prop firm and they'll test you. You don't have to tell them what you're doing, but they'll test you. Basically, they ask you, uh, they're asking, can you make money? And you have to prove it over multiple days of trading and prove that you can make money. And then once you make money with a prop firm, you know, then go live. But I would trade their money first. Trade their money for six months. Why? Because if you lose, you are not legally responsible. They are. Okay? That's what you want to do. That's how I would proceed it. It only makes logical sense to get into the trading business and not put up your own capital. They know that certain traders lose and certain traders win, but they're just like a an insurance company. You know, they got their actuaries out there, and they, they know the, they know the odds, they know the percentages, and you keep about eighty percent of the money. Not bad, but you're risking their money. You blow it all, you lose it all. You're not liable. That's the way I would proceed. It's a smart way to do it. I wish I had this kind of access back in the early days when I first started trading. I'd have saved myself hundreds of thousands of dollars. Next is they trade with the wrong tools. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you, trading tools are so important. I mean, would you build a house with a chainsaw? Well, maybe if you're building a log cabin, but I mean, you don't just bring, put up a, a, a two by four and start cutting it with a chainsaw. It's not exact enough. It will do the job, but it's not exact enough. And what people don't understand getting into this business is brokers are special. They're specialists in a certain area. And if you're going to trade futures, trade with a futures broker. If you're going to trade Forex, trade with a Forex broker. If you're going to trade options, use an options broker. Brokers, are they specialize in one area. It's like going to a dermatologist and having them look at your, uh, you know, adjust your back like a chiropractor would. They, use, they do completely different things. So you may got to make sure you're using the, the right tools. And uh, when I mean right tools in the futures trading, I mean using platforms such as NinjaTrader using platforms such as eSignal. I mean, you got to use the right thing because I can put a trade on, take it off, modify it faster than most traders can. And you need to have that level of speed 
and that type of thing. You know, I know a lot of people like Thinkorswim, right? Thinkorswim is very, very popular. They're a great brokerage firm, but when it comes to day trading indexes and day trading stocks, it's too slow. If you're going to trade options, definitely go with someone like Thinkorswim. They they do a great job with it. And I'm getting a lot of prop firm uh, questions. I'll answer those as I go along. Uh, TradeStation is great. TradeStation does a good job too. Forex, uh, uh, you can use all of these with Forex. All of them. So uh, that, that's what we're doing. Uh, but back testing is something that your, the platform should be able to take you back in time and put up a realistic environment so you can do the trades as if they would have occurred in the past. So anyway, Canadians can't use Ninja or eSignal. We can use Toss. Now, here's the thing with with uh, with Thinkorswim. You can use Ninja Trader if you're trading stocks and equities with think or swim, but you can't trade futures with them, which I think is really, really stupid, and I just hammered them pretty hard a couple weeks ago at the event they had in Minneapolis about that, because I think it's really foolish, but uh, I believe if you contact, uh, I've never heard of Amib Broker, so I couldn't help you there, but if you contact any of these people, uh, you know, Ninja, eSignal, they can connect you with the right broker as far as who can handle doing Forex and that kind of stuff. All right, next is the use subjective indicators. And i got to tell you, uh, I'm not going to knock any, any, any indicator. All indicators work part of the time. So uh, I'm not going to tell you indicators bad or good or whatever. What I am going to tell you is most people use them improperly. Now think about this. You've got really two different types of indicators out there. You've got what's called leading indicators, which which uh, are over here. And a leading indicator tells you what? The future. And then you have lagging indicators, which have told you what's the past. So here's the thing. A lot of you guys use my, 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 um Stochastics, RSI, MACD, etc. Okay, they're great at defining trend. They're great at defining, um, you know, what's happened in the past. But you don't want to use those if if you're going to try to figure out what's happening in the future. We already know knew, uh, know what happened here. That's great. But this these indicators on the left, Stochastics, RSI, MACD. I, I put those up there because they are the most popular out there. This is your platform. This is, if you're building a house, this is your foundation. These are your foundational indicators. But you need leading indicators to tell you what's going to happen in the future. So people apply these always the wrong way because they're always telling you what's happened in the past with no inclination what's happening in the future. So when you, you you can use these indicators to set up your base, but then from there, use indicators such as CCI, Fibonacci's, trend lines, uh, you know, order flow type of indicators. Something that gives you future reading on when a trade is going to happen. See, when I use a CCI or a Fib or a trend line, I know exactly to the tick, to the cent, where my trade is going to occur. Then I can use, but I use these to set me up as far as timing goes, as far as trend and other ways. So it's so confusing when you open up a, a software package and you have 150 to 200 indicators. It's very confusing because, I mean, you could spend two years just on one of them and to master them. But I want to kind of refocus you guys and get you focused in the right area, having analyzed indicators over the past 20 years. Um, it's it's a way way to go. What about Ichimoku? <laughs> um, Ichimoku is a lagging indicator, but 
um, you're taking trades off of leading indicators is what what you're doing on that. A couple questions here. What do I know about Dorman? Dorman Brokerage is a fine brokerage firm. They do a good job. And uh, Dorman is more of a clearing firm, though, than brokerage. So your broker will work with Dorman to help clear trades. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on how all that works, but that's what I can tell you. And I believe Dorman is one of the highest ranked out there. Okay, here's a big mistake people are making. They don't know their trading time frame. You see, your, your, your system and what you're doing may work and it may be perfectly fine. But the problem is, what's your personal psychological time frame? See, not everyone's supposed to trade in a 5 to 15 second time frame. Not everyone's supposed to trade you know, in a 30 minute time frame. So if you get into a trade and you feel really, really uneasy, that's a good sign that you're probably trading in a time frame that's too short and you need to widen out a little bit. So maybe if you have a setup that uh, occurs over 5 to 20 minutes, it's a little slower, that's probably what's better for you. Because the system, as I said before, the system may be fine, it's just you as a trader. And again, everyone's not supposed to be a day trader. Some of you may should be an options trader or trade stocks or indexes or whatever over a two or three day period. So make sure you find your own personal time frame. And by using backtesting and market replay, you'll see that your, your, your time frame is, is wrong or right. See, if you're going to do a trade and you don't have enough trades for the day, maybe because you're trading too long of a time frame, we should be trading shorter. So make sure you check out the, uh, the, the time frame you're trading and, and just kind of sit back and say, well, you know, do I feel comfortable in this environment? And here's the last one. Here's a big one, risk-reward ratio. So here's a problem. is if you're In this business, if you're going to risk $1, you need to make $1. If you just try to scalp one tick, two ticks all day long, that alone, I wouldn't do it. When I trade, I like to risk $1 to make $4. And that's really the secret formula in trading is that risk of 1 to 4. It's really, really important that you are uh, have that kind of a risk set up. So these seven common mistakes are probably why you're placing more losing trades than winners, repeatedly giving away your hard-earned profits, and blaming the market or yourself on not what, on whatever approach you're using. So I want to show you a better trading system, and I'm going to show you a trade called the opening price trade. Opening price is the most important number on your chart all day long. And I'm, you know, let me be more specific because if you're trading Forex, I know it's 24-7. That's completely different. I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about indexes and stocks. Basically, anything that open that has a has an opening, a formal opening, such as uh, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, the Nasdaq. You know, all these have 9:30 opens. Very, very important. Well, futures, let's talk about that. Oil, what time does oil open up? Oil in Chicago opens up at what time? 8 a.m. Great opening price level. What about gold? Gold opens up at 8, uh, let's see, 8.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? It has an open. Anything that has a formal opening time, this trade works well with. Why? Because trading is what? Trading is an auction, right? Trading is an auction. And, you know, in, for example, let's, let's do, yeah, this is open. Actually, we'll go to NQ, and the NQ is open right now. So trading is what? It's an auction, right? This is an auction. You're watching an auction right now. And this is important because when this auction started, it had to have an opening of the auction. 
and the opening of an auction is so significant it sets the tone for the rest of the day. Now, how do I know this? Well, I went to the floor of the exchange just a tour a while back, many, many years ago, and the men and women on the floor, a lot of them are very sharp people. Great stories. I mean, you're here. You're, you're, I mean, there's stories I could tell you for for months on uh, what what goes on down there. And they're not going to tell you their system. I don't blame them. I don't blame anybody. Anybody who has a profitable system, they're not going to just give it to you. Okay? They may give you some hints and and try to help you a little bit. But they're not going to give you everything. Now I'm going to give you a trade today that it's just so easy. Uh, you're going to you're going to go, wow, is it really that easy? Yeah. So when I was talking to this market maker on the floor and I was just asking questions and and you, you try to ask probing questions and they don't, you know, and I totally get it. They're, they're guarding their secret. Totally understand that. But they can give you some good bits of information. So we were halfway into the trading day. Uh, actually, halfway into the op uh, into the open, it was about nine o'clock in the morning uh, in, in the Chicago uh, see me, and I uh, I was just talking to this guy, and I said, well, if you're looking at that chart, what's most important to you? And he goes, oh, opening price, and he kind of he kind of slipped out on us. I go, really, opening price? That's the most important price on the, that's really what you're looking. He goes, ah, he goes, yeah, absolutely. Our opening price. Is where things started. Everyone agreed that that was the uh, start of the day, and you know we'll base our trades based off that. And the funny thing is, I learned over the next couple of years that all these algorithms and all these computer trading and and all these super complex um, you know trading programs, one of their key numbers that they base their trades off from. Is opening price. So I was like, "Wow, that's that's pretty cool." I think I should pay attention to opening price. So I started paying attention to opening price much more often. Now I went back down to the exchange a few more months ago, or actually a few year, uh, a few years later, talked to some other guys, and it's kind of funny. You can actually you can see what they're doing, and I got to know this one guy over time, and we got to correspond and. And uh, so I, I kind of learned, learned this trade from this floor trader. And I'm going to show you the trade in an abstract form first, and then I'll show you a chart and we'll apply it that way. So here's what we're doing. And just to, uh, first of all, this is a one minute chart. So every chart I use has, uh, every bar that I write is a one minute price bar. Now this can be used on, and this is what I what I personally can look at is I'll look at the NQ, the Nasdaq 100, uh, the YM, the ES, the TF, uh, oil, gold, and uh, what else? Stocks, stock all stocks in general that have about one million in volume. I'll take a look at this. Okay, so that helps you out as far as what I'm looking at, as far as uh, what I'm trading. Now, Forex. Guys, I don't trade Forex. So I can't answer any Forex questions for you. I can't tell you what I don't know, and, I, and I'm not a Forex guy. So um, <laughs> that's what I can tell you about that. All right, so what I'll do. Oh, bonds. Absolutely bonds. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bonds, uh, the ZB. Absolutely. Why? Because the bonds open at what time? 7:20 a.m. Central Standard Time in Chicago, right? Okay, so that's what I'm trading. So this this uh, example is going to be on the NQ, and I'm going to have a one minute chart. So the first thing I like to do when I show people this example is I draw this vertical line and this vertical line represents 930 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and then you'll see me always draw this 
dotted green line, and this is the standardization I've used. And this opening, and this green dotted line represents opening price. So what's interesting about the markets is there's actually seven distinct phases that occur most mornings. Nope, 7.20. 7.20 is the open on ZB. Traded every day. That's one thing I, uh, I'll tell you I know for, for sure. I got a great course that I wrote on it also about the opening on buttons. So here's we have. So here's what takes place most mornings. The market will generally, now this didn't happen yesterday, but in the first three to five minutes, the market will generally trend in one direction to the other. <laughs> okay, so price, so when I draw a bar like that, that's a one minute price bar. So what happens is the market will generally trend in one direction to the other away from opening price. And then it will pull back, come down, let's say, and then it'll start coming back up generally, most of the time back to opening price. Now, here's how you have to think about it, and here's the great example that I like to use, is once price decides to trend in a direction, for example, it trended down, opening price is massive. It's huge resistance. And it's similar to just as if they were, someone was on the other side and they decided that, hey, you know what? I'm going to put up a brick wall. And I'm going to make this thing so impervious to break through that if anything comes back in this direction and comes back up, it's not going to go through. In fact, price is going to come up, when, when price does come back up to opening price, it's going to hit this brick wall. And what happens when you hit a brick wall with a big wrecking ball? Well, the, the wrecking ball gets bounced back and the brick wall comes down. So we'll see this happen all the time. When price tr goes in one direction and then heads right back up, it will bounce most of the time off of opening price. And it'll come back down and come back down a little bit further. So what that sets up for us is a great opportunity. And here's the opportunity we're looking for. Is when price comes back down and bounces off this brick wall, bounces off opening price, we're going to put a buy order on the other side to go long. Now, you can do this with stocks, you can do this with the NQ, ES, TF, CL, ZB, you name it. Because once we get on the other side of opening price, there is a high probability that we will trend for the next 60 minutes in that direction. So you're not taking three ticks on a trade, you're not taking 30 cents on a trade, you're taking massive amounts of money on a trade. Now, you, uh, how often does this work? I'll show you. But you got to understand the nuances of this trade. And there's a trick to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on this trick. So, Oh, Tim says, oh, this is a common thing to do. It is, but they do it wrong. Got to do it the right way. I'm explaining to you what the market likes to do on it. Once you understand that, um, it's much better. This is a variation of the opening range trade. This has, uh, it, it can be, but it's different. Okay, this is a very, very, very different Watch the watch. The, I'm going to teach you some nuances here that put it into perspective. So, so a new daily high or low will cause a 60-minute trend. Generally, it will. Well, I'm saying being on the other side of opening price will. 
So here's what we're doing. So we're going to go long on the other side of opening price. So where's our stop? Our stop is on the other side of opening price. Right here. So our stop is down here. We can put our stop on the other side of opening price. Why? Because once price is up here, what's over here? A brick wall. So let me walk you through again the nuance of what, how, and how and why when I do this, it's successful. I'm going to draw it over again. Okay, this line represents what? 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we've got our green line. So here's the mistakes that I saw when I was taught this trade. Here's what you don't want to do. See, the market loves to touch a level, test a level. Am I coming in long clear, everyone? I've got people saying they can't hear me. Okay, do you ever notice how price loves to test a level and bounce? It tests and just, it's just as if you're walking up to a, a river or a lake and you want to jump in. What's up? Do you just jump in? No, you put your toe in the water to see if it's too cold or not. Same thing with the market. It's also called probe and rotation and a lot of, a lot of words for it. But when you got a significant level, like opening price, and price comes down, when it comes back up to it, what's going on? It, it's a test. Here's where we started the auction. That was the start of the auction. Well, well, when price comes back to that auction level, it's testing that area. And generally, it will be rejected. So the, the mistake that most people make on this trade is they just put a flat-out buy right here and don't understand how the market functions. Because here's what happens you know, 20, 30% of the time, is when the market comes up, it overruns it sometimes. It comes up, and it'll do this. Well, it penetrated through opening price, and then what will it do? It'll come right back down. And the people who got in long here, they're crying and complaining, oh, you know what, I got stopped out, trade doesn't work. It's because you don't understand what the market, you don't understand the games they, they're going to play on you. Does price always go to a level to the, to the exact amount? No. It, it will go, it will run over a little bit, it will get close, etc. Sometimes price will come up like this and not even touch opening price and come back down. Sometimes price will come up and go like this. Okay, these things are all going to happen, but you got to understand the rules that they're going to play. So let me walk you through this. Here's the nuance. Here's what you need to learn to make this trade successful. That's a good question, John. That's a very intelligent question to ask. How much leeway do you give on either side of opening price? That's a great question. And the answer is this. If you're trading in ticks, does everyone know what a tick is? I know I get uh, people saying all, the, saying all the time, well, what's a tick? Well, if I'm trading uh, the NQ, one tick is equal to a, a $5 move. If I'm trading the TF, it's a $10 increment. All right, so here's what here's the, here's how the successful traders take this. Is the first time up here, I call it a first attempt. The first attempt on a move on most things is a test of an area. And it's usually rejected. And, and I got all these yahoos out there. Uh, do you guys ever see those people who take all these breakout trades? You guys know what a breakout trade? 
uh, you don't take a breakout trade the first time it happens. There are two exceptions to that and that question or that that statement. One, if it's an opening of an exchange or opening of a uh, an index or a stock, the open there's so much volume that goes through that it's an exception to that rule. And the other exception is news. So just keep that in mind. Breakout trading systems are low probability systems. Why? Because they are sucker trades. And I see this in other trading rooms all day long. A quick question. Uh, it's called break the bank. I love that, Michael. <laughs> it's called break the bank trade. Yeah, it's a sucker trade. Oh my gosh. Um, so the first attempt at a level, skip it. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Here's what you want to do. Now, this is opening price. This is open. This is the this is the first attempt back at that level. Now, is that the first time at that level? No, it's actually the second time at that level. But it's the first attempt to break through the original area. Sucker trade, don't take it. You're going to get squashed and you're going to get skipped. Okay? The second time through the level is when you want to take the trade. That's the intelligent place to take it. Why? Because you've cleared out all the suckers here. You've cleared out all the market makers and all the people that are trying to keep price going in this direction. Okay? So I'm going to walk you through it one more time because I have people who, who mess this up. Sometimes I'll say stuff and uh, I say left, they think right. So let me walk you through this. Real easy. Come up, stop, come down, trade. Go long. Got it? It's that easy. <laughs> so, but let me, be more, let me be more specific on this trade because uh, you need to learn this nuance. Like I said, it can come up and it can overrun to the upside. When I'm trading uh, an index, I'll give it one to three ticks of overrun. I'll actually look at where it stopped and came down. I'll look at the high. If that's the high right there, then I want my trade to be on the other side. Now, this is only in reference to opening price trade. If it came up and went up to here, that's my high. Uh, you don't want to go opposite because there are times, ladies and gentlemen, you will get, it will just blast through. Okay? I'm giving you the higher probability high trade. That's what I'm giving you guys. So let's, so the, the big nuance of this trade is let it test the area and let it pull back. So let's just for fun, let's see what happened today. Let's see what happened today. All right, so price opened up here. Where did price open? Yeah, price opened right here. And we had a kind of a choppy morning. So eh, I don't know about that, Carl. This is really, this is not a, eh. well, yeah, you know what, I, here's what happened today, is look. Okay, you know what, actually, that, that's a good, that's a, actually a good example. Look, see, this is where price opened up. Okay, again, this is the NQ. This line here represents 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
And I know, okay, yep, yeah, 8.30 is because I'm in the Central Standard Time Zone. So to me, it was 8.30. Now look at what happened. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, sale price came up, came down. And when it came down in this area, what did it do? It came up, and you see right there how it overran and touched opening price. Do you guys see that? No? Okay, let me blow it up a little more. Watch this. Let me show this to you. This is a one-minute price bar. Now, what I don't like about this is this, this is not much. This is not much of a, a trend. So, this is opening price right here. See how it trended up, came back down, and went lower. Now, you see how it came up to this? Came up to opening price. What did it do, ladies and gentlemen? What did it do? It bounced off opening price, came right back down. So what do you do? Where's the high? The high is right here. So where's your buy? Your buy is one tick above. That's where you're at. So you see how it loved to test that area? Love to test that area. Very, very powerful. Let me show you a trade that happened... Uh, just the other day, because I like to show recent examples. All right, let's look at this day. Uh, this day just trended. Yeah, a little choppy, a little choppy this day. Uh, let's see, our it never came back to opening price. So, yeah, let's go back another day. All right, here we go. Yep, price just trended that day. See, when price just takes off in a trend, it it's gone. I mean, it's all right. Here's another example. Now, here's an example of choppiness. You got to stay out of this market. Now, watch this. Here's another nuance I want to show you guys. Once you learn these nuances, you'll be in great shape. What's the high and low of this current price bar? It's right here, and it's right there, right? This is the open, and opening price is right here. That's opening price. Now, one little nuance is, if price stays within the first bar's range, it's sideways and choppy, stay out. Sideways and choppy, stay out. No trade. Don't even touch it. Now, here's the thing. Once it starts to trend like this, see how it trended? I'll go ahead and put opening price up on the trade here for... Once it started trending, then we got a setup. See how it trended down, came up, but it blasted through. Let me find you another example. So it's a great trade, but you got to understand that there's nuances. And once you understand the nuances, it's a, you'll find out how phenomenal it is. Okay, so there you go. Here's an example. Now, generally, this trade will take place in the first half hour of the trading day. Uh, there's your open right there. So you see how price went and trended up, went sideways, and then from here, look at that, textbook. What does it love to do? What happened? Price came down, tested that area. See how it tested the area right there? Came right back up, and your short's right under that. 
So throughout the entire day, what am I attempting to show you? Watch, 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 watch. Scrunch up opening price. Look at this, look at this. Opening price right there. How would I do this? I'll make this uh, green. Okay, watch this. Price went up and trended, right? Came back down. What did it do? It touched opening price right there. Went back up a few ticks. You put your short right in under this low. There you go. Does that make sense? There you go. Look how it respected. Where did it stop? Opening price. Opening price, opening price. I'll show you one more example. And where's my example? Let's just go to the next day. Some days price just takes off. Uh, that one, that trade did not hit. Uh, a little bit of choppiness here. Let's let's go back a little further. And I'm just pulling trades out from the last week or two. I'm not going back three years ago, six months. I, don't, I like to find recent trades. And that was just a trending day. Okay, the symbol for the NQ. NQ. What is the full symbol for the NQ? It's the NQ. It's the NQ. It's the E-mini. Is what you're looking for. And uh, Dan, if you're there, I, I forgot how much time I have today. Is it till? Uh, I don't remember how much time I've got today. So I'd like to show a couple more things. One thing I want to get into also is let's see what happened today. Yeah, look at. One thing I want to get into also. is there are seven phases. Actually, um, I'll get into that in a second. There are seven phases of the market that happen most mornings. And these seven phases happen between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And one thing I want to show you guys also is... At 9.45, generally most days, to the T, it's generally a reversal. So, uh, hold on one second. I got told. Okay, all right. Good. Thanks, Dan. Watch this. Huge, 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 huge. And right now, I want, just so you know, I want price to come down. Touch opening price, come back up, and then my short would be right here. That's my next trade. Ooh, leading indicator, huh? So I'm going to make sure I'm in simulation here, and I am. Let's change this to NQ. But my short would be right here at 1825 after it touched opening price. Okay, so if you notice... One thing, one little, one little piece of uh, candy I want to give you guys today is, did you know that 15 minutes into the trading day, the market loves to reverse, and so you see what happened right here? See how it stopped and reversed and came back down? Huge opportunity every day to take a trade. Now you stack that with a volume spike, perfect setup. Great setup. 
volume is extremely important to have on your chart. You've got to know where volume is. And uh, when you get a volume spike like that, it's an exhaustion of traders. Watch for things to go in the other direction. Okay, you know, I forgot to get into the stop management and the money management of this trade. That'd be pretty bad if I didn't talk about that. So here's what I do. Let's say it comes down and bounces, comes back up, and I'm short right here. So the way I, honey, uh, way I handle money management is my stop is right here, but then my targets are here, here, and way down here. I use three targets. My first target is designed as mainly two things. It handles money management and psychology. Why? Because that's the biggest problem of most trades, psychology and money management. So if I have my first target four to six ticks away, and I have a probability of 90% of my first target getting filled, then why not encompass money management and psychology? If I can reduce or eliminate my risk, and then I have a win under my belt, how does that change my psychology? So my first target is all about money management and psychology. It's, what it's, it's all it's designed to accomplish. My second and third contracts are all about getting multiples of my trade. So if price decides to come, back, come down here, bounce up, and I go short, it stops here, target one, it's down is uh, is all about money management. Target two is all about multiple money, and target three is about the big win. So target one will ha will handle my money management. Target two will put money in my pocket, and target three I can hold this for one to two hours if I choose to, and take the big trend. Very, very important. And target three helps me grow my account. Target two gives me cash flow. So it's very, very specific on how I accomplish this whole thing. And that's what I'm looking at. Okay, so a couple questions. Uh, does the C, uh, you know, the funny thing about the CL is at 9.15, it generally goes sideways. And it does a sideways range. I'll show you that. So the CL opened here. At 8 o'clock. At 8.15, it just goes sideways. Look at every day, watch it. It just it does this practically every day at that time. Only because I've seen it every every uh, every day possible. So what could you possibly do with that information? Who asked that question? Ray, Billy. Oh dude, I love <laughs> uh, that movie was just on last week. I watch it a lot. Um, yeah, but look, I could I could set up a range on that, couldn't I? That's a possible range trade. I've been looking at that for a while on oil. So, because uh, then you got to break out to the upside, downside. But don't take your first, don't take the first of a breakout. All right. So questions. Um, you basing targets on fibs or retraces? Targets I'm basing upon prior day high and low is what I'm looking at. Uh, okay, uh, questions. 
what is the opening time of GC? It's 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, John. You have multiple targets. How many contracts do you start with? I, when you start trading this in simulation practice, always use three targets. Your targets are going to be as follows. Four ticks, eight ticks, and then the final, the final one is usually 16 ticks, but it's also prior day high and lows, okay? Oh, GC. Uh, yes, that's right, Chris. It is 8.20 Eastern Standard Time. How do you get that horizontal line on your volume chart? Oh, oh, oh okay. So... Real easy. I just go ahead and I put it on there. Uh, to me, 1,800 contracts is, is the magic number when it comes to trading the NQ. So all you need to do is just simply put a horizontal line on it and just do this. You go here, horizontal line, and you can put it anywhere. You can move it. 1,800 contracts tells me everything I need to know about that. Wrong question, Stephen. The question is, how would you start if you could only afford one contract? The answer is, you don't trade if you can only afford one contract. You trade other people's money before you, you do that. Never, if you can't afford one contract, you should not be trading. You should be trading other people's money. I don't mean to come down hard on you, but, but Stephen, I would hate to have you lose money that's at risk that you can't afford to lose. I would hate for you to have that happen. I want you to lose that money with other people's money and not your own. So um, always trade three. No. Well, Andrew, you got to pay exchange fees. So if I'm trading the CL, I've got to pay $85 a month to the exchange. Okay, that, that's a monthly cost. I mean, that's just like anything else. I mean, you got to pay for your internet every month, pretty much, right? So uh, there is a monthly ongoing cost, but it's it, it's it, you're going to pay that anyway. It's going to be cheaper though if you're not professional. Eighteen hundred contracts on NQ, on NQ, on NQ, on NQ. Let me, okay, Bill, let me give you something. If you're trading the CL. The minimum contract size is a thousand. Okay. Uh, I'll give you some great stuff. CL minimum contract size one thousand contracts per minute. I want to see that at the Yelp end. Uh, NQ. I want to see eighteen hundred contracts per minute at the Yelp end. ES. I want to see minimum twelve thousand contracts at the open. There you go, buddy. See, if I don't see that, then uh, I know the I know the real traders out aren't out there. TF, TF. If I'm trading TF, I've got to see what is it? Twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred contracts first minute. Uh, is eighty five dollar exchange fee is that tax deductible? It is a business expense. I would also tell you go see your attorney or your accountant and discuss that with them. But generally, for most people, it is a tax deduction. But always talk to your tax professional before you do anything like that. I'm not a tax guy. I'm a, I'm a, I trade, and that's what I do. ZB minimum. ZB minimum is, what is that, 4,500 contracts? Okay, so hopefully you've learned some good, cool stuff today. What I want you to do is check out the opening price trade. Make sure you have some examples and you just don't go into it flying blind. Go check out the last two or three months on opening range. But I want to introduce you to my 1K a week system because this is what I get into it. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand all that, Jeffrey. Uh, so if you just have two, 
Yeah, the margin is 500 bucks on ZB. How cool is that? And you're getting, what, 31.25 a tick? It's crazy. It's awesome. So if you just have 2,000 in an account to trade from, and I, I got to change this slide. Dan, I got to change this slide. It's wrong. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Guess what? If you just have 2,000 in a trading account, don't worry about that. You're going to trade other people's money. Not until you have experience should you be trading your own personal money. But these trades can make two to three hundred bucks in a day. And this is just to set you up for success. And that's what it's all about, setting yourself up for success. So in a, just 30 minutes in a trading day, most of the time the opening price trade will hit. And there are many days I do much better. Now, I actually do this in a live trading room. My trading room isn't open all day long. Have you guys been in a trading room that goes five, ten hours a day and it's like a marathon? Oh, my gosh. That just drives me nuts. I like to have a trading room. It lasts how long? Generally, anywhere from 45 minutes maybe to one hour. And I'm done. How long do professional athletes play a game? Well, what's football? Football's one hour, one hour a day, right? Yeah, five hundred dollars per contract on ZB. That's huge. That's, that's amazing how they got it that low. So I'm going to show you how the market makers move in the 30, first thirty minutes of the trading day. I'm going to get into that. So here's what you get with my 1K a week course. It's a six-module course online. You'll learn three powerful trades. It only takes one of these trades to make a potential of two to $300 a day. And all modules are recorded online. So as long as you have Internet access, you got access to the course. And each of these, are, these three trades are covered in depth with multiple examples. Now, you know how I spend a lot of time on the nuances of the trade? Any fool can put on a trade. That's not hard. But there are tricks that they love to play on you, and there are games they love to play. So we're not going to play that game. We're not going to let them do that to you. Opening price trade works all day long. I didn't even get into that. Watch how opening price is respected all day long. And... Opening price is the most important on your price chart all day long. You've got to know that. I'm going to show you how to get how to avoid getting fooled. They love to fool you. But once you understand the inside game, it's a completely different story. I'm going to show you how these strategies are used um, for both long and short trades. And I just touched on the 15-minute reversal. Look at your chart 15 minutes into the trading day. It is extremely important that you watch how price tends to reverse. And that's a whole other story. I can tell you at a different time how I learned that trade. So I'm going to show you the 15-minute breakout trade. Also, I'm going to get into that, how the market reverses, and I just showed that to you today. Uh, where is it? Oh, that's CL. Here's NQ. Where's NQ? There we go. Look at that. Today, 15, what? You see the big volume spike? See the reversal? They love to do that to you every single day. Watch out for it. you got to learn what they're doing, and they've got to learn the first seven phases of the trading day. So uh, I'm going to show you when to, when to enter, when to exit, and I really don't care what direction it goes, but you've got to be on the right side of the trade. Now also at 10 a.m., people trade news wrong. Now do I understand what the actual news event is? Yeah, I understand. You guys ever have it when they come out and earnings were greater than expected and they kill the stock or earnings were better than expected and the, top, and the stock takes off? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the news um, and how to trade it. It's finding the right news and the hotting to trade it. So uh, I'll get into the 10 a.m. news trade. Most people trade it incorrectly. I'm going to show you how to nail that trade. And where to find the best sources of news, which announcements 
move the market, which ones don't, how to take maximum advantage of whether the news is good or bad, and how to set up your profit targets and trailing stops to minimize potential losses. Rule number one about trading, protect your capital. Hey, what's going on in t eight minutes with oil? We got news coming on in oil, right? Stay away unless you know how to trade oil right now, guys. We got oil news coming out in eight minutes. Oil inventories are coming out. Protect your capital. How do you protect your capital? What I've been, to what I've been talking about all day long. First way you protect your capital is you trade other people's money. Now, you're not going to trade my money. You're not going to trade... Uh, when investing's money, there's other prop firms that are licensed that will do that for you. It, in my opinion, is the only way to do this. Do not risk your own money in trading until you are, you have six months to two years of successful real profits taken off the table. Then I would even consider the thought. All new traders, all new traders, if you've never traded before, do not have the experience to trade real money. They don't. You need experience, that's the way I would do it. Okay. Uh, prop firms, I will recommend prop firms to you. Uh, there are good ones, there are bad ones, but I will put you in the right direction. I know these people personally. I just hung out with a couple of them uh, a couple months ago. They're reputable. Um, my son trades with them, my daughter, um, good, good people. So protect your capital. Don't trade your own money. Trade other people's money. And that's what I'm going to end. That's why I use automated stops and targets and money management to help keep you away from things. If you're interested, go to investorsuccess.com forward slash 1KW. Oh, that report's not out yet. Uh, but that's not all. I'm going to give you three bonuses, guys. How would you like to see me trade? In my in my trading room every day, you got to see me trade. The bonus one, I'm going to give you my indicator. My indicator will light up these trades for you like a flashlight. It will show you where they're going to happen. It allows you to focus on the trade, not the setup, and there's a less chance of missing the trades because the indicators will show you that. That's a $497 value. The successful trader mindset, psychology. Psychology is so important in your trading. You need to have that psychological part happen, and that's why we've included this in the course. We're going to give you a predetermined level of success, minimize emotional trading, and focus on mechanics, and do the successful money management strategies. And we're going to set up a daily routine that keeps you in the zone. That's a $375 value. Now, bonus number three, I'm going to get into trading with volume. Volume is extremely important. You need to know how it affects the market. And understanding volume helps you understand the chart, and you need to be able to read a chart just as if you're reading a book. That's a $199 value. So you're probably asking at this time, how much is it going to cost to invest in a system like this? And how much will you be willing to invest in your education to make potentially $1,000 a week? If you add it up, the online course is $1,000. The, the indicator is $497. The successful trader mindset is $375. And trading with volume webinar is $199. You add that up, that's $2,071. Now, my competition, they'll charge you $10,000 for courses that aren't even half as good as what I do. But I'm not going to charge you $10,000. And I'm not going to charge you $2,000. Or I'm not even going to charge you $1,000. This is an absolute phenomenal deal, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time, uh, you'll get a one week of the system, the training, bonus, everything for $97. Bucks. I'm sure everyone here can afford $97 to test this system out. All you need to do is go to investorsuccess.com forward slash 1KW. And we back it by our 90-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Sign up today. Check out our entire course yourself. Just take a trade. Just show me you did something. 
the reason why we do this is because people steal our stuff. I'm sick of people stealing my stuff. And uh, to show us you took some action by taking one trade over the next three months, starting with a $2,500 simulation account or real, it's up to you. And it just shows you took some action. And if it doesn't, didn't work out the way we said it would, we'll give you your money back. Okay. So you've got no excuses left. I'm taking all the risk out of this. Here are two great reasons why you need to sign up today. Number one, this price is not going to be available forever. We do raise the price of this from time to time. Two is I have a fast action bonus. For the first 33 people who sign up today, I'm going to give you three weeks in my trading room. So I showed you the opening price trade. How would you like to see me trade this live? Live and in color. Well, be one of the first 33 people come into my trading room. I'll do it for you live. Now, let me back up a second. From 8.50 to 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, my trading room runs are about 45 minutes. Don't you love that? So you can see me in action. Get all your questions answered. That's where we answer questions. No strings attached. There's no renewals, no hidden charges, nothing. And it starts on Monday. And this is not a marketing gimmick. Uh, we do have the right to raise the price and limit the amount of students we have. I don't want too many people in my trading room. Al, I answered your questions in class yesterday. We don't generally take, um, for people who are in the training room, we answer our things in the training room. That's when we do it. Fran, who just came to our uh, event a couple weeks ago, said, hey, I love the time trading room. You really are showing what you practice and what you preach. It's a massive plus. I'm committed. It's more important that you watch these trades live with me. It's huge. So all you need to do is go to one investorsuccess.com forward slash 1KW and uh, watch me trade live. And keep in mind, if you don't take action now, how will things be different six months from now or a year from now? And how much more can you afford to lose using your current approach? So go to investorsuccess.com forward slash 1KW and get started today. Thank you.